Good evening, party people, young and old. If you are young, you've probably come to the wrong place. We serve alcohol here. If you're old, then I'm sure you're already familiar with this rigmarole. Hi there, everybody, and good evening. I see that Miss Annie is already in chat first. Technically speaking, I was the one who was first. Among the non-broadcasters here, technically, Anna was first. What? However, you were the first one to speak in chat. So with that, we give a nice hearty congratulations. I hope everyone is having a wonderful Wednesday. It is Wednesday, as what happens every single week. Hump day is over, sort of, kind of. This is that other hump in the day. Unless, I guess, come to think of it, in terms of hump day, is the hump the part that you, you like, is the hard part of the day? I guess it probably is the hard part of the day. In that case, we are in one of the lulls, and that's the good part. I'll take it. I'm also an Anna. That's true. That's true. I guess third, fourth, who's counting? You're counting. I'm not counting. I can't count. You know, there's a song that I heard on TikTok called I Can Only Count to Four, and it starts out like, I, oh, one, two, five, four, me count so poor, I can only count to four, I can only t count to four, I can only count to four, and it's, it's sung in like a metal screamo style. I liked it. It was pretty good. Screamo's not usually my kind of style, although that when, as, growing up, my father did a lot of like hard rock stuff that he would record in the basement. So every, you know, when I play video games in the living room, which was right above his studio, I would hear that kind of stuff as, you know, dinner was being made, as I was coming home. I guess actually he worked, he worked more complete nine to five hours back then than he does now, I guess. And he works from home now. So I guess that's a little different. So I guess it must've been during dinner time if we were all surrounded for dinner. And I guess I would kind of be in my room doing homework and stuff. I was a very scholarly young boy, very scholarly individual. That's how I got my degrees. And now that the degrees are over and I spent the last like year or so attempting to figure out what the hell to do with my life because school is not here anymore. I don't have the school and I don't plan on getting a PhD. I have decided to allow Anna to be the person who academically usurps me after she gets her doctorate. I'll only have a master's, boo hoo. I will have three degrees. She will have three degrees. She'll be matching up with me. Anyways, y'all came for a cocktail today, I hope. If you didn't, surprise. <laughs> today, you may have noticed that there is a plant that is looming behind me, and that's because today's cocktail is one called the Gin Basil Smash. I've been looking through my Around the World in 80 Cocktails book, which I think this might be the third cocktail that I've pulled from this book since we've been doing this bar on Wednesdays thing, and if for good reason. I love this book because it's got a couple of like lesser, I say lesser known spirits, it, for, for me at least. Like these are not spirits that I can necessarily find in my liquor store. It's just the kind of stuff that if I'm out and about in various parts of the world, I may be able to find that stuff out there. I can't think of any off the top of my head. Natu naturally, this cocktail I'm doing now does not feature does one of those spirits. Uh, Praline's liqueur is not in this book to my knowledge. That's sad. It is very sad. I think there's only one, and that's in my black book, which is over on my other desk. I have my books scattered across the apartment right now, in case you haven't noticed. Not that you keep up the schedule anyways. I have not been posting on a schedule for like Instagram and YouTube and all that stuff because things have been a little hectic. Honestly, I'm just trying to get my life together in, in a good way. Things are fine. Things are good. It's just that the, the consequence of that is things will not be on the schedule. Aside from the stream, stream is on schedule. Been doing that for a while now. That is so easy. To, it is so easy to click the record button and set up this bar. It's so easy to do. All that other stuff like the editing and the pictures and the stuff like that. Like, I guess there, become, there comes a certain point where like, unless you have the time to put in the effort, you need to find how to dial back on the effort. And to be honest, when you work a nine to five job, it is very difficult to find the time to put in all the effort that you want to put in to things like your hobbies and everything surrounding those hobbies. Uh, it's tough to do, especially when you keep yourself to try to do that on a weekly basis because you're giving yourself your own deadline. It's tough. Do I want what? Grapes. Grapes? I'll take grapes. Anna's offering me grapes. I Why wouldn't I take grapes? Lunch. Leftover grapes. Let's see if I can catch this in my mouth. I'm gonna show off today. I always am. Let's see. Let's see. Grape in mouth. Grape in mouth. We did it. That was a grape performance. In any case, yeah. It's tough to do. Ha. It's tough to do on, um, and I don't, I don't think like, like, I'm sure some people find it a lot easier than I. I have very high standards. I'll admit that. I could lower my standards, but I don't want to do that. So I won't. So this is the way it works for me. Honestly, it feels good. And if it feels good and it's keeping you smiling, then why should anybody have a problem with it? So the cocktail this week is the Gin Basil Smash from Hamburg, Germany. Another thing I really like about this cocktail book is that it has this whole, like, like, write-up of just, like, 
information about the cocktail itself. It has your methods, your ingredients like usual, but also gives like a whole background on it. There's beautiful little illustrations. And at least in some cases, this is the first one I found, there's a little bartender's tip at the bottom for like what other things you should know about the drink before you make the drink, just to give you like a little bit of an edge. Like in this case, I actually, I, it, it's a gin cocktail, naturally, gin basil smash. And I've been running really low on gin. And I was like, okay, well, if I'm going to make this cocktail tonight, this is the perfect reason to go out and buy a new one. But what kind of gin am I looking for? I know there's different types of gins out there. You've got your London dries, your American dries. I suppose if there's dries, there must mean that there's non-dry equivalents out there. And I also found there was a couple of infused gins too. And I was like, what kind of, I, I had wondered, what kind of gin do I do for this? Usually I just go for whatever is like the most affordable. It looks the prettiest. Previously, I had a blue bottle called Blue Coat. It's blue. This time I went with something else because this particular bartender's uh, tip says to use something that is a more floral, new world style of gin and new world, America is the new world. So I took that to interpret that as an American dry gin. And so I found the, the gin that I'll be using is Chef Curated Irvine's American Dry Gin. This is the guy. I'll read what's on the back of the bottle when we get to that part of the uh, the recipe. But um, apparently a portion of the... Oh no, I might as well read it now because it's it's the entire point of what I was about to say. Apparently, a portion of the proceeds from my Irving's gin bottle gives back to our active duty military, veterans, first responders, and their families. Learn more at IrvineSpirits.com, which seems fitting because 4th of July was just the other day. Excuse me while I uh, straighten out my bar set up here. Yeah, and 4th of July was the, uh, was the the other day. I enjoyed it. It was a day where I kind of caught up on a bunch of things, kind of hung indoors. I was a, there was a lot of personal project stuff that I wanted to figure out. I finished some 3D printing stuff, finished some thumbnail stuff. It was a great day. And then we went to go see the fireworks. And if you're caught up with me, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go into the details of it. But the July 4th fireworks here in Philadelphia was cut short, and I won't go into any more details there because it was a little. You can read the tabloids if you, you the not tabloids. You can read the news if you'd like to, but uh, it ended prematurely. Everybody is okay, at least in my realm, which is a good thing. And I hope everybody else out there is okay. From what I've seen, at least on Twitter, most people were okay, which is a good thing. But I'm sure, you know, hearts out to anybody in those situations. In any case, Gin Basil Smash. What's in a Gin Basil Smash? Well, I'm glad you asked that. It contains the muddled up remnants of half of a lemon, basil leaves, you combine that with gin and some simple syrup, and you add some more basil in there just to make it look pretty. And that's what we plan on doing. So the little con uh, description that this book has for the Gin Basil Smash, again, this is Around the World in 80 Cocktails by Chad Parkhill with illustrations by Alice Ower. Ower spelled O-E-H-R, which they're cool. I, will, I love it. I love this book. The craft cocktail movement that has recently reinvigorated the world's drinking culture can list many achievements, but it is curiously lacking in drinks that can be called modern classics. For drinks writer and bartender Jeffrey Morgenthaler, a cocktail must be well known, able to be made at most bars using common ingredients and techniques, and flexible enough to survive deliberate or accidental tinkering to be called a modern classic. But the proliferation of house-made bitters and syrups, as well as the attention to detail that sees craft, co craft cocktail bartenders dial in their original recipes to precisely suit individual brands of spirits has led to a kind of balkanization of the cocktail. Fortunately for us, there are a handful of contemporary classics meeting that definition that have made the leap out from behind the wooden bars of their birth. New York City bartender Audrey Saund Saunders of Pegu Club fame has created more than a few, namely the Old Cuban, Earl Grey, Marti, me, and Gin Gin Mule. So has the late Dick Bradsell, the Espresso Martini, Bramble, and Treacle. Sam Ross's Penicillin is another, as is Paul Harrington's Jasmine. But for sheer economy of construction, few of these drinks can beat the Gin Basil Smash. Created by Jorg Meyer for his Hamber Hamburg Bar de Lyon, or Lion, it's spelled Lion, I don't know how to say that in German, in 2008. The Gin Basil Smash is the kind of drink that could have been shaken up at any stage from the 1880s onwards if only one of pioneering American bartender Jerry Thomas's protégés had thought to add a handful of fresh basil to a gin fix, that is. With only four ingredients and some very basic techniques, but more than enough flavor complexity, the Gin Basil Smash is a masterclass in elegant simplicity. Little wonder that it can now be found on cocktail menus all over the world. I, for one, have not been all over the world, not since I came of legal drinking age in America, but I, gotta, I, I think I can take their word for it. So let's get things started. First thing that we'll need is we'll need to do some muddling. Muddling is uh, just smashing a bunch of things into a container. So I'm going to grab one of my containers. I'll put my... Strainer off to the side, we'll need that later. Do a little funny trick because we can. That's cool, we won't need that. I'm gonna use that. 
pint glass so we can see what's going on on the inside. The first thing that we're gonna need is half of a lemon. So naturally, I've got my half of lemon. I need something to cut it with, naturally. There's the cutting board, the place with which I will be cutting it on so as to not dirty my bar set up here. Oh, and I don't wanna be eating a sticker today. Fun fact, um, I was the weird kid who at lunch in like middle school would decide to mistake, quote unquote, mistakenly eat the sticker on the apple just because you wanted to get attention. And I did get attention. They're like, oh my God, you ate a sticker. I'm like, oh, I had no idea. I had every knowledge that I was eating the sticker and I've survived to tell the story, which is great. Now, I only need half of this lemon and I don't know, I need to figure out what, what dimension to cut it in. It says that we're chopping the lemon into chunky wedges. So I'm thinking if I'm chopping it into a wedge, then instead of cutting it this way, I guess what is it? This would be width wise. I'm gonna cut it lengthwise. So I have a nice half that I can cut into like three chunky wedges, I guess. That's what I'm gonna try to do. Let's go with that. My table is still wobbly. That will be fixed at the next apartment eventually. Um, I don't like having a wobbly table because as you can tell, my glass, pint glass is uh, shaking and wobbling. And I don't, don't quite like that. This one half of lemon, what I'm gonna wind up doing is saving it for later. And the way that I do that, there's probably other methods of preserving lemon, but what I usually do is I just take the half that's facing the air and just kind of put it on a paper towel and I wrap it. And then if I have rubber bands nearby, which I don't actually have this time around, I'll just stick it in the fridge. Now, whatever that side is down so that there's, it's probably got something to do with oxidation and stuff like that, or rather the lack thereof. I'm not exactly sure, but I'll put that below my bar for now because my refrigerator is way over there. I'm hoping to have a nice mini fridge when we get the new setup. Not that I have one of those right now, but I'm, I'm sure I can find one. People are giving away mini fridges all the time. It's not a very difficult thing to come by. Let's see. Let's cut this into three wedges. Actually, you know what? Let's take let's take the glass off the table just for a little bit. I don't want to break. It's the only clear pint glass I have, and I don't want to destroy it. If you like tea, you can make lemon juice ice cubes for the summer. That is such a great idea. Oh, I love that idea. I think I was thinking recently, and I don't know why I thought of this, or probably because you brought up the ice cubes, but I was thinking of like things to turn into ice cubes so as to make things better. Oh, you know what I was looking into? It was it was trying to make iced coffee. The uh, the point of like, the, the problem with iced coffee is that if you take ice and just put it in coffee, all it does is it waters down your coffee. It makes it less coffee-y. And so one solution proposed was to make coffee ice cubes. That way your coffee gets chilled with the ice, the cold of the ice cubes, but the ice cubes are not ice cubes, they're coffee cubes. That's one solution. Another solution is to double brew your coffee, which is you brew one cup of coffee with a freshly made pot of other coffee. You know, usually you add hot water. You can also add hot coffee to coffee and double brew the coffee, which is, I never thought about that. Uh, that or you just make like cold brew concentrate and you just, you know, you cut it in half. It's already cold. It doesn't need to be iced. Add some ice to it, I guess, if you want to. Anyway, I have my three chunky lemon wedges and I'm going to drop those into the bottom of my I'm calling it a shaker. It's a pint glass. It's how one half of a shaker, so it accomplishes the same job. And the next thing I'm going to need is 10 leaves of basil. And so now I think is the proper time to bring Bob the basil plant, who usually sits in the other windowsill, to the foreground so all y'all can see the beautiful monstrosity that has been growing in my apartment. Bob the basil is very tall, um, so we're not going to be able to see the, the part of Bob that shines the most. Also, everything is going to get really weird over here. Hi there, this is Bob, my basil. <laughs> it's great. I, uh, I don't, I don't, I'm not allowed to have pets in this apartment for a variety of reasons. So I choose to spend all of my love and care on my plants instead. This is Bob the basil. We have menthol man, the mint plant. We also have Piermo the parsley. I love Bob so much. I love Bob too. You know, for a while, Bob wasn't doing very good because Bob was wilting and Bob was vying for space with all the other plants. And um, well, we moved, we repotted them, gave them bigger space to move around, uh, did a bunch of budding. The problem was when you have mint plant here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my face in here so we can actually see things. The thing with mint plants, or I'm sorry, basil plants and mint plants too, if you see them flowering, they're spending all of their energy attempting to like repopulate the earth. So you have to nip off those buds. I actually, I actually just nipped off one of them uh, before stream started. But uh, these little, these little guys, these little buds here. If you nip off those buds, uh, then they, I don't know, I guess it kicks them back into uh, not so promiscuous proliferation mode, just into growing mode. So uh, I guess that it kind of worked and it kept on growing, taller and taller, and uh, probably deserves to be outside, but alas, here we are. 
And he's growing some green onions right now. It's the only thing the uh, thing you can keep alive. We actually had we had some garlic cloves the other day that started to sprout, and so I researched how to uh, keep them sprouting. And so we have four garlic garlic cloves that are now sprouted up in the window. Their leaves are like this tall. It's incredible, and I think it takes a long time for them to actually like start. I guess growing more cloves. Um, but so I'm gonna take I'm gonna find the ten most delectable looking parts, uh, ten most delectable leaves of ba Bob the Basil and um, put them in my cocktail shaker. And maybe we'll go a little bit more. Personally, I like strongly basil-like things. I like, uh, I think basil to me is very, very cinnamony. And I really like that about basil. I like to put my basil on pizza. Like the, honestly, you can put basil on like peanut butter toast and it tastes absolutely wonderful. It's, 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 a, it's a beautiful spice to have around. I don't use the parsley very much. I'm not like, I'm not too up to snuff on how to properly use parsley, so I don't often use it. Anna uses it a lot in cooking, which is great because somebody's gotta trim that plant. And then mint pops up in cocktail stuff all the time and I can always make mint syrup with it. Technically speaking, I could also make basil syrup if I wanted to, but um, I don't I don't have any recipes in my repertoire that use basil syrup, so I'm not super worried about it. I thought there was a bug up here, but I've done a bit of trimming, so it's not a bug. It's just, it's just a loose branch. And I could probably do a little more trimming too. And this is really cool. Some of the smaller shoots down here, like um, like like this guy and this guy, were actually just pieces of the top that I cut off and moved to the bottom. So like, I can just keep making more basil plants. It's great. I love how proliferous these plants are. Oh my God. Um, the downside is, you know, we needed more space in the apartment to be able to have more plants. And so that's one of the reasons we're moving because I need more plant space. Anyway, Bob's gonna go back over here. Maybe in the new cocktail setup in the new apartment, I'll actually be able to have like a constant wind, like consistent window space to be able to keep the plants back there. So like, you know, I don't have to keep moving them back and forth. And we can have a whole view of everything all the time. Everything everywhere all the time. So now we've got about a dozen, 10 or a dozen basil leaves and we have three chunky slices of lemon. We're gonna muddle them. We're just gonna take this little, I bought this at the store. It was advertised as a garlic masher, but it is it is a muddler. It is literally, it looks like something you can use to muddle things. And we just, just gonna smush it. We're gonna get all the essence of the lemon and the basil in there. And uh, it makes a satisfying sound, so. Or at least it can. It's a lot of, whoa. It's a lot of lemon juice. It's a lot of basil, probably basil oil at that point, at this point. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kinda, I'm gonna press in and I'm gonna twist around to try to get as much juice out as possible. Now, what pirate did you cripple to steal their leg? I did not. Actually, if there is a pirate out there, he's now got two less legs because I have two muddlers. One is for the muddling and the other one is actually for garlic, so. There is a there is a peg like looking muddler. It is very peg leggy looking. And it's a very honestly, this kind of looks like a kind of peg footish. It seems kind of more like the size of my foot than anything else. Not very unless, you know, actually. Hmm. I need this to be about twice as long to be a, a good peg leg for me at least. Otherwise, I'd be very off balance literally all the time. It could be a peg foot for me though, if that's even a thing. Uh, my foot is about the size of this. Maybe probably a little bit less. Um, I, I do a size comparison with my shoe, but um, full disclosure, I'm not wearing shoes or socks and I don't really feel like putting them on camera because uh, that's weird. Now it smells like lemon juice and basil. It's more more so the lemon than the basil, but uh, yeah, we'll see how that translates. Actually, when you stick your nose in it, it's like the cinnamon and the, the cinnamon, the cinnamony spiciness of the basil is coalescing with the the what I'd call a sour smell of the lemon. And it's, that's nice. I wonder if anybody out there does candles. Here's a candle idea, a scent candle idea. Basil lemon, a basil lemon plant, lemon basil, which I'm sure is probably already a thing. A lemon basil candle, that sounds awesome. And that is a very sour muddler. Interesting. All right, now that I've got that all muddled, we're gonna do the regular process of we're gonna add some, or we'll do the ice at the end, I guess. But I need the next ingredient. Next ingredient is the gin from earlier. The Irvine's American Dry Gin. American Dry because that's that's what the instructions told me to do. They said go for something that's a little more floral, which makes me think that a London Dry Gin is, I guess, a little less on the floral side, maybe more on the botanical side. I, I don't really know. I'm not really up to snuff on what makes gin the way that it is, aside from, you know, it uses a bunch of botanicals and stuff, which I think is like the staple of uh, gin. Specifically, um, I think in a lot of cases, one of those botanicals being juniper. Um, I've never actually, I have some juniper, ber juniper berries 
in my collection that I was planning on using for a, um, I think a gin based, a juniper based infusion, but I completely lost the recipe and I don't know what I have them for. What makes a gin dry? Honestly, this is the third time that I've thought about that question this evening and now we're gonna look it up because I'm very curious. Dry, what does dry gin mean? Like, what does it mean? Dry gin, what is it? Gin, cool, but why gin and dry gin? What's termed a dry gin, according to bonappetit.com, is that there's no added artificial flavoring. The flavors are all natural aside from, uh, from the botanicals, said our gin guide, plus no added sweeteners. So apparently, if you do add sweeteners and whatnot to a gin, it is not a dry gin anymore. It's liquid, right? It is, at least from what I can tell. This doesn't seem very solid to me. It's being kept in there by the cork. It is extra virgin dry, extra virgin gin, extra virgin gin, very extra virgin, distilled to the point where any ounce of virginity has been completely distilled right out of it. And it smells like a virgin. Just kidding. It smells nice. It's a little more, it's more alcoholy to me than other gins that gins that I've smelled before. Not that I, you know, it's it's kind of it's kind of sanitizer like, but not in a bad way. It's not like it's not like I'd huff this in the school like in the school alleyways to get like a little high. No, I'd be like, I I I probably wouldn't do that. Hey, what's going on, Vio? We're smelling gin around here, and I'm trying to compare it to uh, huffing in the school hallways, which I never did as a child. No way, Jose. Although I do like the smell of a nice sharpie, which is not what this smells like. This does not smell like a Sharpie. And uh, honestly, it's a new it's a new glass of gin, and so I'm curious what that tastes like. So let's drop a little bit in the snifter and see. Let's get a real smell for it. A real smell and a real taste, because I am very, very curious. And I like that. It's got a nice, it's very clear. It's, it's clear. It doesn't have any color to it. Why would it? It smells like gin, who knew? It actually smells very similar to vo some vodka that I have in my collection. It's just got that, it's a very powerful, very powerful alcohol in it. This is 45% alcohol by volume. It is 90 proof. So it is it is rivaling some of the, definitely some of the vodkas that I have. But I get, I smell the juniper in there. Or, okay, okay. I smell the gin in there. I don't know what juniper smells like, but if I had to guess that all gin smells like juniper and this smells like gin, I think it smells like juniper. I'd say I'm getting some juniper notes there. And it's pleasant. I like that. I really like gin because it does, there's a whole dimension of the spirit that I feel like I have never explored. Like, I know rum is sweet, I know bourbon sometimes got a spice to it, but like, this has, Jim supposedly has like all these different botanicals that you can sniff out and taste out, and I don't, I don't know enough about botanicals to be able to piece those out, but maybe as time goes on, I'll get better at that. Let's see how it tastes. Wow, okay, first of all, it went right up, right up to my eye. This tastes distinctly different than any any gin that I've had before. I can taste the gin qualities to it, but there was something, there was something on that first hit there that tastes familiar, but I don't know what it is. Man, I don't know what that is, but it's, it tastes so familiar. It's like a particular plant. What that plant is, I don't know, but I've definitely had that plant in my mouth before, for sure. Um, what that plant is completely escapes me. So I'm sure there are notes online. And he says that rum is her favorite. Rum was my favorite for a while, but that's just because it takes up the most of my collection. I think I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bottles of rum up there. All different in their own special way. Some flavored, some not, some, some, some infused with other things like the falernum. It's great. And it's also like, it's just, it's so good in Coca-Cola. I think, you know what else is really good in Coca-Cola? Fernet Branca. It's a minty, Minty burning tasting liqueur. Burn like, like, like wood burn, like burnt things. And I mixed that with a bit of Coca-Cola the other day, specifically vanilla Coke. And it was amazing. It was great. It totally made my day. That's what I sipped my cocktails to. So we need an ounce, to, uh, not an ounce, uh, two ounces, right? Let me double check my notes. We need two ounces or about 60 milliliters of an American dry gin or some other new world dry gin to get something a little more floral, a little more close to I guess what, I, I, come to think of it, this was made in Germany, so I guess it's not technically New World, but I wonder, I guess it was made in 2008. So by that point, America has been heavily colonized and uh, is never going back. So two ounces of that. This is mostly gin at this point, mostly gin and some lemon juice extracted from the, um, 
the lemons that we muddled in there. Um, still smells heavily like basil. Love the smell of that. That tastes great. That smells great. And the only other part that we have now, aside from shaking this guy up and garnishing it, is we need to add some simple syrup. Which I'm still working off of the one batch that I have. I built, made a big bottle of simple syrup. I don't need to make big bottles of simple syrup. Honestly, what I should be doing is I should be making smaller batches of simple syrups and whatnot so that I use them quicker to make things more fresh. This is this is old, but it's still good, and I like the way it tastes, and it's in a Stelichnia bottle, which I think I'm pronouncing correctly. Certified Alpha Grade simple syrup sure am i gonna muddle it again no nah, actually what we're gonna do next is we're gonna just shake it in the shaker and that should do any that should do most of the other smashy smash stuff what that'll wind up doing is probably really break up the basil a bit to the point where i mean we're gonna wind up double straining it anyway but there's probably a bit of infusing going on in there right now just because you know alcohol is a very i would call it a very empty substance alcohol is a very empty substance in the sense that it can take on a lot of flavor just like water can and so when you have the alcohol sitting in sitting with other things surrounding it it will take on those flavors which i'm sure the gin is doing right now combined with what the lemon juice was already doing but i don't think we need to muddle it again but honestly i'm sure there's many different techniques out there for to make the gin basil smash and to be honest it wouldn't be very smashy if you didn't muddle it at least once but at least from my instructions we will not be muddling again just shaking really really hard and so that's what i'm gonna try to do i'm gonna try to shake it really really hard only after i add about a half an ounce or 15 milliliters of simple syrup to round off all the other liquid ingredients about a half ounce let's try that not too bad at all half ounce or 15 milliliters easy and that should add a little bit of sweetness back to it now another bit according to the um the expert instructions on the inside of the book is that we may need to add a little more simple syrup or lemon juice depending on how the sour and the sweetness wind up balancing each other out in this particular cocktail because the amount of juice that comes from a lemon it differs the amount of forwardness from whatever you pull out of the basil is going to differ honestly the qualities of the gin that i'm using is is going to differ as well as, I guess, various other characteristics like the air that I'm breathing and the water that I use to grow these plants and, you know, whatever. Or whatever they put on the peels of the lemons, wherever we got this from. I think this lemon came from a food shipment we get every two weeks with snacks and other fruits and whatnot to remind us that we should be eating healthy and not binge eating. Snacks every once in a while keeps me from binge eating and then fruits and vegetables all the time. It, uh, I think it keeps me healthy. And I think I feel pretty healthy. I feel pretty healthy these days. And now, all that's left is to shake it up, pour it into a glass, and garnish it. So, let's do at least part of that. I'm gonna take a cocktail shaker. I'm gonna try to... I'm feeling a little more confident on the breaking of the glass. Uh, the bre breaking of the glass. The breaking of the, um, the, the cubes. So, I'm gonna try my best to take this big old cube and break it into this this cocktail shaker, which I'm not usually very good at doing. I don't want to hit things. And I always make a mess. Gosh, damn it. I'm really... All I do is get the ice everywhere. Every single time I think like I'm making improvements, I'm not. Maybe I gotta hit it with the other side of the spoon. I don't know. Oh, God, that's in my face. Just kidding. Nope, not. We'll try that again on another occasion. Let's add some smaller cubes in there. It makes our job easier. Eh, there we go. Who needs to crush up cubes when you can put a big old cube and a couple of smaller cubes in there? Just makes things easier. I just noticed I don't have my I don't have my rag this time, so I'm gonna use these conveniently placed uh, unicorn slippers to sop up some of the wetness of my bar. We don't need you. Go go away, bar spoon. We don't need you. These are these are slippers. They're too small for me, but they are unicorns and they are beautiful, just like you. You are beautiful because you are a unicorn. Maybe not physically. Maybe not, not mentally, maybe not even metaphorically in any way, shape, or form. But somewhere, we've all got a little bit of unicorn in us. At least I choose to believe so. Anyway, let's combine and do that shake. Do that shake. That feels pretty shaken to me, to be honest. My, my arms are tired on that one. Wow. I'm not usually tired after a shake, but that was a pretty hefty shake. Goodness gracious. Don't need that side of glass no more. It smells cool. I like that. Let me go get my yoga blocks so we can do that zoomy thing that we usually do. And by zoomy thing, I mean not like Zoom, like the teleconferencing app. Silly. 
I mean that thing where like we actually zoom. Oh wait, we need a cocktail blast. It's chilled, just like the instructions say. You maybe can't tell because, well, it wasn't my freezer to begin with, but now it was sitting in my cooler, which, you know, objectively, not as cool. I like the way that looks. Now let's do that. Yeah, like that. All right, now we're gonna double strain it. Double strain it into the cocktail glass. Um, I need the other half of the double strain, which is this guy. Double strain. It's easy. You just kind of, you just kind of like, a, you know, you pour from one strainer and then you pour into the other one. Excellent. And it looks like I'm about hitting just the bottom of my second strainer there. We're going to add a bit more ice to this as well after we add our garnish. So it will come up to the top. Give a little shake to see what else is in there. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. All right. The next thing we're going to need... I'm gonna like zoom back out just for a moment. We gotta get some stuff from, we gotta find a basil sprig. Basil sprig? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find, I'm gonna find a sprig from Bob the Basil. How about, you're looking all right. Ooh, there's a big one down here. A very big thing from Bob the Basil. That's how we're gonna do it. And I'm just gonna, there's my mid sprig. There we go, that's beautiful. Especially right out of the top there. Oh, it's kind of looks like, oh, it's cute. I like the way that looks. That's beautiful. Let's zoom back in. And then we have to add a little bit more ice. So I'm just going to top it off with a couple more small ice cubes. And that'll kind of bring this whole soiree together. Cool looking. I like the way that looks. I don't think, I'm usually a bit stingy with the amount of like herb based garnishes that I put in my cocktails. And so I decided to go all out on this one. There's plenty of Bob to go around, so. I don't think I need to be stingy with it. Let me top that off with some ice cubes. And that's it. That's the gin basil smash, ladies, gentlemen. Those who fall in between and beyond. Put my knife away. That looks pretty cool. I think this now counts as a salad. Sure, I'll take it. I want to call it a salad. I mean, if, we, if I eat the basil, then it's essentially functioning as at least pieces of the salad. I wonder how Anna would feel about us calling this a salad. It's got a hefty amount of alcohol in it. I don't know if fiance, PT fiance would approve of this being a salad. Um, I guess if we added some, maybe we add some peppers to it, maybe add some tomatoes, you know? It can make it very, it can make it very, uh, very, uh, oh, what is it, salad-y. I'm gonna pose this guy for a picture. He looks so cute! I love the way he looks! Gin basil smash. I got a nice view of the camera in the background. Say cheese, everybody! Camera's not even facing me. Always have your smile on for the camera, so they say. Uh, because otherwise, they'll catch you frowning. Cheese! There we go, I like that. That's great. The Gin Basil Smash, everybody. The Gin Basil Smash is created by muddling about half of a lemon that's been cut into some chunky sliced wedges. About 10, I put about 12 basil leaves in there, muddling them together, then shaking with that muddled concentration, 60 milliliters or two ounces of gin, about half an ounce or 15 milliliters of simple syrup. I did a one-to-one -one ratio. There are many others that exist out there. And then a basil sprig to garnish it on top, double strain that into a chilled glass, add a little more ice on top of it. There you go, that's your gin basil smash. And they said to put it in an old fashioned glass, which, I think this is an old-fashioned glass. This is this is an old-fashioned glass I got in my collection, and I have a couple others. But muddling is a good word. Never heard it before tonight. Muddling, muddling. I think when I heard the term muddling, I was like, why don't you just call it something else? It's because it's like, because it reminds me of like mortar and pestling, except inside of a cocktail. And so like mortar sounds similar to muddle, I guess. It's also fun to call the things muddlers, because I think muddlers is a funny word. In any case, there are a lot of funny words in the mixological world. It's very funny. How does it smell? Well, it smells like a heaping load of basil because I just stuck my schnoz into a big ol', you know, big ol' sprig of it. But aside from that, if you kind of take that out of the way, it smells supposed to be like lemon. I'm getting a very lemonade smell from this, mostly. And I can also smell, like, the alcohol of the gin. It's a very alcoholy y gin uh, coming off the top there. But how does it taste? Supposedly... This is a really, really good modern classic cocktail. And as soon as I saw it and I was like, all I'm missing is gin. It's like, I gotta do this. Cause I have to take advantage of what I have in my collection. Ooh. That's nice. I like that. 
So the first thing I get, I get, I get lemon aid, lemonade first off, but it's not like, it's not specifically lemon juice. There is something else in there. I'm going to take a wild guess and say that it's probably the gin work and it's magic there. It's like, it's like somebody watered down your lemonade without reducing how sour it is. There's a little bit of sweetness in there, probably coming from the simple syrup. And I don't really get that, that kind of, the sweetness lingers. The sourness really does not. What lingers is all those afternotes of the gin in there. And, and honestly, it might not just be gin. It's probably also the basil because I'm getting like a leafy taste there too. And that could be the characteristics of the basil kind of shining into the end of the evolution of this, or it could be the basil. It probably the basil for all I know. I haven't, I haven't made a drink recently that has the basil in it. And like, you can see like, this is a very cloudy cocktail. It's, it's very, it's very, very cloudy. So there's a bunch more particulates in there. And I don't know if it came mostly from the basil or maybe from the lemon. Honestly, I could believe both. It's super, it's super pleasant. It's like, I don't think I've ever had, I, I, I don't think I've ever actually had lemon and gin before, but it's such a pleasant conversation. It's very, it's very refreshing. This is like, this tastes to me like the perfect cocktail to have while like, sitting on the beach like it's not super duper sweet um it's almost seltzery in a way and i feel like it would quench my thirst despite the fact that it's got a bunch of alcohol in it which is inevitably going to make me more exhausted and more dehydrated in the long term but like one of these with some like with some ice in it the way that it's currently sitting right now it's really good it's very very good it sounds like it'd be great for a brunch oh yeah now the brunches that I usually attend involving alcohol usually involve an endless mimosa type deal. And, uh, well, this is no endless mimosa, nor would I really want it to be endless because if this, if you could get endless gin basil smashes, um, I'd be the one who'd be smashed after that. And so would the rest of the people who came with me. That, or if they're not partaking, then they'd be like, Cameron, this is drink number three. Are you okay over there? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, I can totally take another one. It's great. I'm eating all this food. I mean, I guess it's a little different too if you're out at brunch because ideally by... Unless they start you off in the beginning before your meal actually comes, then you have all this food in your stomach that helps you kind of... It absorbs the alcohol, I think. There's probably some science behind that, but I've found that if I eat a lot of food, which I did this evening. I ate a lot of food this evening. Um, we had a... Uh, we had like a chicken stir fry type thing. There was chicken in there. There was broccoli in there. There was some like spiced up like potato wedges. It was great. And then some extra vegetables made on the side because we like to keep ourselves healthy. And whatever bag vegetables we have, are actually very good. They're very, they're, they're soft, soft vegetables. I know not everybody is into that, but it's very, it's very tasty. It's a very good dinner. We've been doing very good on dinners recently. And I made the dinner and I prepared it, but I made the dinner. So kudos, kudos. We try to help each other out around here. Speaking of Anna, she's in the other room. She's doing her studying and whatnot. But I just want to give a special shout out to my dearest Anna. One, because we've been dating for like eight years and we had our anniversary like a month ago, so it's old news by now. But she has a birthday coming up and so does her younger sister. So it's birthday time and I'm gonna do just a little, just a little birthday balloon for Anna. If there's a pink one in here, I know it's her favorite color. The closest thing I have is purple, but I know she doesn't like purple. So I'm gonna do a red one because it feels like the closest thing to, to pink around here. Happy birthday, dearest. I'm gonna pop a balloon for you. She said, okay. I love my dearest very much. And to be honest, I didn't do very much anything special for her this year. It's been crazy with working and stuff like that. Which should really be no excuse. In any case. We're gonna make it we're gonna make it worth their while when the birthday actually comes plus we're having a get together this weekend with a couple of friends for board games and whatnot and it's gonna be great board games and some homebrew DD of our own so happy birthday upcoming anna i love you pop balloon <laughs> balloon has been popped should probably have a loud sound warning for that i don't exactly know how loud it came on this but i think i don't know if i have a limiter on this microphone i also kind of got my ear a little bit in any case very exciting birthdays are exciting oh and i guess we should do a party horn too it's just, it's something we do. In any case, thank you everybody for coming along and joining us for the cocktail hour. It's a, it's a bit less than an hour. It wasn't really an hour this time, more like 40 minutes. Wait, LMA, I was so confused when you mentioned D&D. Oh, no, 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 that, oh, oh my gosh. So, so Anna's got a homebrew thing that she's working on. And then aside from that, there's also a campaign that I believe we're starting this weekend as well, which guilty as charged. I have not made my character yet. I have put an absolutely no thought into it. 
My mind has been occupied, but that's just a lame ass excuse. I will have progress and updates by tomorrow. Tomorrow is the day that I blocked out during the week to be able to do so. Because I, I, my first thought was, oh, I'll wait till the weekend. But the weekend came and went. And I was like, well, somebody's waiting for somebody here. So I'm gonna make sure that I get that done. I promise, I'm a man of my word for the most part. But this was good. Honestly, this drink is getting even better the more as it kind of like, um, kind of uh, dilutes itself a little bit. <laughs> Lil Abe is very happy to hear this. Looking forward to my character. I I have absolutely no ideas right now. I could sl I could throw things out, honestly, but I it wouldn't it wouldn't feel right. So we're gonna have some introspective time where I get to think. Like I would I get to my usual process is I'll sit at my table. I actually work from home tomorrow, so I'll have the opportunity to for like for lunch just to like sit at the table and be like. What is the question that needs to be answered? Take your time, buddy. You got this. <sighs> Thanks, man. I appreciate it. I got my D&D support crew in the chat right now. We appreciate it. Make a bartender character who's on a quest for vengeance after their tavern was decimated. That is a very compelling story. But I would never let my tavern get decimated. Unless, by some natural disaster, it was completely out of my control. I had no means to stop it. I was powerless. I fought off many, many bar ne'er-do-wells and fights and whatnot. But I wasn't able to do so this time. I couldn't. And I will take my revenge. Maybe. Hey, Domstar. How was work today? How you doing? We're going to be switching things around real quick. Uh, if you're sticking around, we're going to play some Hollow Knight. It's, uh, it, I don't think it's as scary as it has been. We went to the bottom of the abyss last week. It was all right. Today was easy. That's great. I was, I had a, it was not an easy day today. There was a lot of, there was a lot of thinky, thinky brain power going on there and a meeting that I almost missed. And it's my meeting. So it was very embarrassing, but life goes on. There are other weeks, there are other meetings, and I can make up for it by, I guess, working a little bit harder. So, that'll be how it is. Mostly orientation. Well, now I guess the real fun begins, right? All the, all the hard work and effort that Migs brings you, brings you the pay. In any case, I shan't linger around here any longer. You've been waiting far too long for the parrot screen. I know you have. And so, to welcome in the parrot screen, I click a button on my keyboard. But before I do the button on my keyboard, I say to everybody, have a wonderful evening if the evening is happening where you are, or a morning if the sun is shining. We'll be back next week with another cocktail on a Wednesday and video games. So stick around for video games. Video games are definitely oh, very happening. Mood today was rough. Two hours of professional development. I wanted to say you gotta wake up at 4 a.m. for work and that your stream goes good. Thank you, Dom. I appreciate that. And Annie's gonna take a nap as well, so have a good rest of the stream. Oh, thank you, everybody. It's, it's okay. It's okay. Y'all be back eventually. I know you will. I have faith in you all. And I'll say hello when you come back, because honestly, what better way to welcome people back than to say hello? And for my, for my, whoa, for my response of hello is a goodbye. See you all on the other side. Cheers, y'all. Bye! Behave myself. I'm not usually good with bee jokes, so that was a pretty good one even for me. All right, sweet. Okay, well that's fine. Ah, more bees. All right, well that was that was good. More bees. Okay, yeah, that bee came right after me. But you can't match me. I am the bee master. I have full control of the bees. <laughs>